uh, everyone. Uh, first, I need to commend InterSwitch Nigeria and the partners uh, for putting together a platform like this to drive conversation on the next level in our evolution as a country, especially around digital and how we package ourselves for the opportunities that the world has got to offer. So I'll be building on the existing protocol uh, by building on the great thing that happened yesterday. Yesterday we spoke extensively about disruption. So what I'll be doing today is to complement so much inspiring stuff that we had yesterday. Now, beyond the wow effect of innovation is the now effect of how we situate the innovation within the reality of the end users. Innovation or disruption without experience tends to distortion. So there is a need to bring the old ideas of disruption within the context of the Okada rider on the street, uh, the mama put on the street, or a young graduate somewhere in ABU's area who want to use digital service to access everyday products. So what I'll be doing today is to find that point of convergence between disruption and experience, because experience is actually the middleware by which we translate the best of disruption into everyday benefit for everyday people. So quite a lot of our conversation is going to be very practical, uh, finding that point of convergence. So therefore to start, I think uh, it might be proper to start through the mindset of our target audience, which is the ordinary man on the street. So I'm going to start by profiling a basic innovation logic from the mind of an average man on the street. It's not a person who wear ties like all of us or seated in this room like many of us, but our business relies on them. So it's important that our logic of thinking of disruption is from the thinking of the man on the street. So I'm going to take you through a journey of one of the popular staple in Nigeria that is very common to low income, and I believe many of us in this room are familiar with it, is what we call Gary. Is there anybody in this room that doesn't know Gary? It's a popular staple in Nigeria, and one of the most commonest ones is what, is what we call Ijebu Gari. So I'm going to take you through the logic of, of innovation and experience and striking that balance to be able to situate this conversation within the context of everyday man so that the whole wow effect of disruption can be situated into the now reality of experience. So the business model of Ijebu Gari is always like this, where there are three different entities that stand alone and, they are, and if I want to enjoy this experience, I have to buy them in bits and bring them together. Oftentimes, I have to buy in bulk. I have to buy my sugar in bulk. I have to buy my garlic in bulk. I have to buy my granuts you know, in bulk. And then I begin to take it. So I carry the liability of full purchase because I cannot buy in bits. Now, there is an evolution. We begin to come into what we call miniaturization. When a product can be customized to the pocket level of the customer such that you can have what you need when you need it in the format that properly staff your demand and the user education. Now, this progress further to the need to also brand it, give it an identity, give it a credibility, a form of consistency, and also make it available in a pocket type format. So that is even reduce mini miniaturization, what the cowbell effect created in this market. Now, all of this speaks to everyday reality of, from innovation to experience. Now beyond that, it's also the need to change user education. Should Gary Jebu consumption be limited to when I'm at home and I have my cup and spoon? Can we also further disrupt that mechanism and provide other opportunity for multiple user educations so that even if you are stranded in traffic, you can still enjoy your Gary Jebu. This is everyday reality of everyday people. Now you can have it branded with variants. You don't have to be stuck to one format. You, can, you don't need to buy it with granite. You can buy it so you can have a lot of line extensions that serves your need. You can have your cup and at the same time have your spoon on the go. This is another version of it. The version of it is when there's customer service. If you need it delivered to you, there's a phone number. You can call any time and it can be delivered to you. And the other one is this. Who are the smartest people using it? Because somebody has come to realize that this strikes a chord. 
The evolution in Gary Jebo means something. And somebody understood that meaning and has built a larger-than-life posture around it for commercial and political opportunity. Now, even beyond that is the fact that we now even have it now more packaged as a product that you can buy off the shelf and you just need to pour it and you enjoy your Jebu Gary on the go. There's a simple logic of innovation meets experience on a daily basis from an average man perspective. So, the summary of everything I've shared with us from a fundamental perspective simplifies the old theory of customer experience to mean customer excitement that is far and above customer effort. Everything we do on a consistent basis to go many steps further for the customer in a way that what's, what they need will make it available when they want it, how they want it, with what they want it, and at a price they can afford in a measure that is significantly higher than the effort that they put into it is what we call customer experience in a simplistic stand. So it's beyond having a call center, you know, having inquiry desk, self-service portal, social media. It's far beyond that. It's a deliberate effort to position our business at the core of what is important to customer and organize ourselves as a business to serve the reason why we exist, which is the customer. And that is why modern business will say customer is the king, the queen, and the, um, um, the, the, the master owner of the reason why the business exists. So, having established the fundamental from the everyday man language, it will be important to put some theoretical framework around this. So there's some logic in the argument so that the magic of innovation can blend with the logic of experience. I'm sure that is clear. In, uh, disruption brings the magic. Experience brings the logic. So there must be a balance. So, but to substantiate some of the logic, it might be important to look at some fundamental theories that has been propounded. Even customer experience itself has undergone several layers of innovations and disruptions from the days of software models to brand experience audit to brandscape to customer journey mapping to customer immersion, atmospheric analytics. There are 59 fundamental theories that explore the broad themes of customer experience from an academic perspective. And there are many from industry practices that have also been tried and tested over time that provide an indicator of the broad meaning of customer experience. But in simplistic terms, Customer experience is not just the taste of who you are, it's the aftertaste of what you mean. It's not just the sound you give, it's the echo that comes after the sound has gone. So which begins to substantiate the general feel from academic perspective that customer experience is not customer service. It's the overall picture of what you mean, your takeaway, what customers think about you even when you are not there. So I will make effort to synthesize a lot of academic logics that exist in this regard to build a lot of my assumptions. But I like to start from the industry expert. Industry expert I've established. I'm quoting some of the established industry experts. They've said, customer experience is exceeding customer's expectation. Is doing things in a way that matters to customer. Is doing things that customer never expect you can do for them. Let's go to one of the most intelligent and logical definitions of customer experience propounded by Forrester, which is very, very simple. It's about, is the service enjoyable? Is it easy? Is it effective? Three E simple model. And they also propound that it must be 90 days after a customer has been exposed to you because there are other follow-up after effect that all cumulatively add up to define who you are and what you mean to them. So. This is my summation of quite a lot of academic theories and business practice in my own language. What I consider customer experience to mean and how we can blend it in a symphony with all that we are looking at from a disruption perspective. Now, a lot of us are familiar with the first layer. We often see customer experience from the first layer definition, which is all the immediate signals that come from a brand. Your touch point, your call center, your product and services, your platform, your, your employees, everything that customer touch on a daily basis. But there is a second layer of a customer experience, which is the amplification of your meaning, which is more realistic in a digital world. It is not the experience I have with you. It is what I report in the social media and what somebody picks from the social media. So there is an amplification that happens. And that is the second layer where your customer experience 
is the goodwill that you enjoy that people also communicate within their social circle that broadly define who you are and what you mean. And that also goes to the third layer, which speaks to people who look up to you, the admi admiration you share among your non-user, your labs user, and those that use you with competition. So it's the cumulative of all of this that begin to say, the whole issue of customer experience is transmitted narrative. It's your transmitted narrative through customer spectrum of meaning. Every day, every hour, the broad picture, the broad view that is transmitted directly, indirectly, through the channel that you control, and most importantly, through many channels that you do not have any control over. And that is what actually makes it an issue that we need to understand that it can be engineered, it can be configured, it can be branded, that even though you are not in control of it, you can synthesize it, you can synchronize it, you can moderate it and be in charge of how your narrative is configured and deployed in the real world of the customer. So, I will go further. And I will pick one of the best models that is most Nigerian-centric, that speaks to the reality of Nigeria. There are many models, like I said, but one of the most simplistic is the Disney model. Very simple, it's called the Compass model. The Compass model is built on four pillars, emotion, wants, needs, and stereotype. And I will explain it. At the top of customer experience is emotion is based on the understanding that for every need of the customer, there's a deep-seated outpour of emotion that comes each time the customer engages us. There are frustrations they are bringing to the table. There are challenges in their everyday world that that should be the first point of engagement. Forget the fact that they have come to enjoy roller coaster and all that. The first thing you should target is their feeling. If you can touch their affective domain, you will naturally connect with their cognitive domain, which of course translates to behavior, positive behavior in this regard. So, from a Nigerian perspective, I'll tell you, when somebody called the call center, it's not just the fact that I have, I'm making a complaint that I lost my card. It is a series of emotion behind the card. It took me 30 days to get that card. That card is what funds my education. That card is what I used to take care of my younger ones. That card is what I used to resell SIM card at school as a young student. This card is what I use for my registration. For every need, for everyone, a deep-seated emotion that anyone that will win the understanding of emotion is the one that will win the game of customer experience. When I can understand consciously and carefully all the underlying emotional driver behind every customer touch point. So, whether it's experience, whether it's interaction, whether it's touch point, I am more keen to make sure that all my interface are first emotion, emotional managers, first before product and service manager. They're not just trying to count how many customers they have served today. They are more interested in how many frustrations they have resolved, how many happy moments they have created, how many excitement they have left behind, and how many positive feelings they have left behind. But of course, we bundle customers into a bunch of statistics. I have called 20 people, I have called 50 people, I spoke to 100 people, it's numbers. But behind the numbers are bundles of emotion. And that is why the Disney Compass model provides a most relevant template for us as a country that want to transit into digital evolution, that for us to be able to tap into the best of it, emotion must lead us. And the second thing that is important, we often look at needs. So forget the needs, which is expected. Also look at the wants. Wants are the excesses. Wants are the extra curricular requirement that facilitate the delivery of your baseline services. I'm going to speak a lot to that. But you cannot succeed in customer experience in this part of the world when the enabler or the facilitator of your service are not available or they are stunted. I want to deliver good application experience and the internet is not working well. And as far as the customer is concerned, it doesn't know the difference between the POS that is not working and the internet 
back in it. As far as they are concerned, it's all integrated symphony. So if we want to win, we're not just looking at the baseline need, we're also interested in the wants because it's in the convergence of all of this that we're able to deliver customer experience that actually make a meaning and strike a chord with the customer. I will proceed by aggregating some of the theories around the omnichannel encounter, which simplifies the fact that everything about customer experience is all about meanings. What meaning have you left in the mindset of the customer after they have made a call to a call center, after they have used your application, after they have made a walk-in, after they walked to one of your branches, or after they have actually met one of your staff in a bus on the street or in a plane? So it's all about meanings. And that is why, if it's about meanings, that we must be interested in how to rewrite the meaning, be in control of the meaning, and project the meaning the way we want and how we want. Let me simplify this and begin to speak to Nigerian sentiment because sometimes it's very, very important we localize some of these broad themes based on existing research about the mindset of Nigerian customer. This XYZ axis speaks to the profile of the Nigerian digital customers today, how they are segmented, because it's important you know what are the drivers. Traditionally, we use two framework to define customer experience as customer experience expectation, and then we look at return on experience. Those are the two levers that are traditionally used. But there's now a Y axis, which looks at digital maturity and readiness, which is the biggest responsibility we have. That is no much how you digitalize the ambience, you must understand how your customers have grown, and if they have not grown, how do you help them to grow? so that you can maximize the return on investment and at the same time manage your expectation. So there is a convergence in how we must see the old definition of customer experience within a digital reality from a Nigerian perspective. So we have the Digiratis. Digiratis are at the top. They are ready. They are digitally mature. You know, they use the Amazons of this world. They are familiar with a lot of solutions. They are ready. And then we have the Figital. Figital is a combination of physical and digital. They love digital, but they still want to put a face. They want to converge experience. And I tell you, based on research, these are the segment that gives the highest return on investment because they know what they want. They will want to meet somebody and at the same time, you know, engage digitally, more like a combined experience. But I'm more concerned about the people who are very close to the zero line, both for X, Y, and Z axis. These are the people who represent the critical mass of Nigeria. I'm talking about the driver who we want, you know, we want a driver or a conductor to use digital for payment. That's the man I'm talking about. I'm talking about Malam on the street who is worried about how much money he keeps every day. He would rather want people to come and buy sweet and they just swipe and go. These are the hostages, the digitophobias, the ignorates, and the connected dinosaur. Connected dinosaur have got a lot of money. It's got the best device in the world. It's got the latest phone, but it doesn't even know what they call an app. And that is the man who wake up the next morning. He will recharge 100,000 naira. And by the time he wake up the next morning, he will call MTN and say, my account is zero. Because he left so many applications self-updating themselves. Because he does not know the difference. They're big dinosaurs. So there are a lot of sentiments and emotions, like I said, driving all these needs, wants, and stereotypes. And either will win customer experience. Is that business that know how best to profile the sensitivities of the customers, the emotion behind their needs, and how to configure the optimal experience that serve different segments. Even for different categories and industry, there are different combinations of these metrics. My job as a business leader is to understand what is the combination of this mix within my business, and how do I have a strategy or a tactic on how to sufficiently and effectively serve each of them. I'm going to do a lot around ignorances. Ignorances represent about 70% of Nigerian population, which agrees with Nigerian body of statistics that says 71.2% Nigerians are living below poverty level, which means they earn less than a dollar a day. These represent a critical mass. If you want all the issues of digital evolution to catch up very fast, we need to get them into the ecosystem. Financial inclusion, social inclusion, digital inclusion must all be the language that we all speak if you want disruption to become real in our everyday world. Or else, you may have great ideas, but it's going to fall flat on the field of execution. 
I'm going to use mental metaphors. I like to use mental metaphors. Mental metaphors. Mental metaphors are imageries. You don't think in words. You think in images. So if I say dog, you are not looking at D-O-G in your mind. You are seeing an image. I'm going to show you three images that came true as a fundamental mental metaphor that profile the digital expectation of an average Nigerian in terms of what do I want you to deliver for me? What do I want? I want you to carry me and get me to touch what you have also carried that I can touch. So you have raised what I need to my level. You have simplified it for me and then we can have that keys of customer engagement. That is number one. Does it make sense to us? How many businesses are doing it today? The two of you, you better just stand side by side. No, they are not at our level. Their knowledge, their expectation, their reality is not at that level. Somebody got to carry them. Do we have processes, platform, way of work that carry customers to the level they are meant to be to have a kiss of the best that we have to offer? The second mental metaphor is that I want it extraordinary. I want it beyond what is common. I want it special. We are all familiar with this. This is what we call satio water for big boys in the room who do not know how our customers drink water when they're in traffic. They don't buy bottled water. They buy what they call pure water. And pure water comes in 50 CL. But somebody went further to say, come on, can we augment the experience? Can we add to the experience? Can we add to the meaning? Can we add to the narrative? Can we go beyond customer expectation? Why has also been profitable? Because it's actually cheaper to make it bigger at a lower cost, whilst also getting customers to buy more, and why the customer look good. That I just don't buy in bits and pieces, I buy mega. Which also reinforce their perception of themselves, which are critical in the delivery of customer experience. How do you make me feel, not just what you sell to me? Third mental metaphor is normal things. Can you package it well for me? I'm confused when it is all everywhere. Can you just bring it all in one for me? I, I, I love digital, but I have to go and buy, download an app, get to register this, bring my mother's certificate, bring that. There are too many things that you need. Can you just simplify this and package it well in a way that resonates with my context? I'm sure we're all familiar with this picture. I know a lot of big boys are in the room, but this is the reality of the everyday man that digital is, not, is meant for. I don't believe that what we're discussing in this room is just to create a wow, but to situate our wow within a now, which is the man on the street. So let me now go further and begin to give us some Nigerian-centric imperatives, practical imperatives of all these theories, these metaphors, what are some products and service ideas that represent some of this and what would they mean to us as we jointly transit and moving from disruption to experience and offering something that is differentiated and unique to the average man on the street whose life we have committed to making better. So I'm going to pick some examples. Some brands might appear in the picture, but it's just for purpose of engagement. It's not an indictment or one bank is better or one business is better than the other. But just to tell a story, because we are building an industry, or an ecosystem that we can all benefit from. So, now, one of the critical issues in customer experience is contextual proposition. Proposition that speaks to my need, not proposition that is based on our standard operating model, based on how we internally work. Now, July 8, 9 in Nigeria, there was a massive flood in the lucky axis of Lagos, and some part of Lagos were affected. By Monday of that same week, 24 hours after, a leading payment fintech company in Nigeria started a major campaign offering customers emergency fund on the go, made available within 10 minutes. So if anything has happened in your house, just place a demand. So it does not need to go through process of approval of, uh, you know. In digital world, customer experience must be contextual. It must speak to my need as it goes. And customer business agility must be so structured to respond to this almost at the speed of light. I even believe that this proposition should have happened on that Saturday, not even 24 hours after. But I know for traditional business, this can take two months to approve. And by that time, customers have looked for an alternative. And the question is, have we been able to strike a chord or not? The second point that we must know as drivers of this 
digital disruption is that for the man on the street, if you recall the mental metaphors I've shared with you, there is a lot that has to do with cost category complementary proposition. You cannot be a mono industry player and you want to make a customer happy in the digital revolution. As far as this person is concerned, you are responsible for every channel of delivery, the last mile, the middle layer, you are responsible. So you must understand how you blend the need state of the customer with other paraphernalia, either as an enabler or a facilitator or a complementary services. So I'm not just selling services. I'm interested in your movie, in your travels, in where you go to enjoy time with your friend. I must build my proposition to be inclusive. If I'm a mono service, I cannot win the game of customer experience. We must be sympathetic to their complementary cost and tap into emotional moments. I must understand that for every service that I offer, there are complementary enablers. There are other things that customer must use. So if I am selling banking services, is it not bad for me to also say I'm going to help you to get an internet access like this company has done? That I'm going to get you the best deal from an internet company so that you can enjoy my service and it will not be at a cost to you. That is customer experience. So in building my business model and my business case, I'm not just linear. I'm cross-linear looking at every other complementary enabler that I must weave into it because customer would rather have it all in one. They've got no time to begin to run around, scatter, looking for every bit and pieces. And we must tap into their moments. And I'm going to use a very popular example of something that happened in Nigeria, I think sometimes in August, where, you know, there was a, a, a spiritual revival in Nigeria when people were waking up in the night to do praise. How many of us were familiar with that? It was called Hallelujah Challenge. How many of us participated in it? People were awake between 12 and 1 using the internet, you know, to, to, to praise God. Of course, it has nothing to do with business. But a bank at that time was running a promo. And that moment represents a moment of connection with customer. So what did they do? They have so many things they wanted to offer. They just quickly readapted their promo to tap into that moment that, oh, wow, if you participate in this promo, you're going to get a free data which you can use for your hallelujah challenge. What does that tell us? A great business that tap into experience a business that understands moments, timelines, milestones, and can configure all of this in a very dynamic, fast speed of light to give customer more than what they ever expect. Now, there must always be on-the-spot proposition for digital channel. This is a picture of in a bank. A bank where my money, everything I've labored for is kept. And I pack my car there. And my bank is telling me, your car is parked at owner's risk. And ask myself a question. This is the place where the most important thing in my life is kept. And here I'm, I'm putting my car. And you are disconnected from that importance. Who says that when I park there, you cannot tell me, take a picture of your car, of your whatever, upload it on an app, and you get a two hours insurance while you park here. And that gives the bank an information. I know you have a car. I know how many cars has come in here. You know, all those basics that ultimately add up are completely out of view in how we are there. Because at the end of the day, it might be this car park that defines the overall picture that this customer has about bank A versus bank B. I'm looking for a bank that will offer me 30 minutes insurance while I park at their premises. Because they've got a camera to track me and they've got the data which they can use to further profile me and offer me better service. That is bank assure model. Banks can offer insurance services because customers want it all in one. So, servicing the ignorances. I'm sure we're all familiar with a lot of messages here. The way we service the ignorance today is that we play around issues around, you know, clear your doubt, disclaimer, you know, if you put your SIM and somebody take your PIN, we are not responsible. We have completely dissociated ourselves from the most important part of customer sentiment. But the truth is, if you want to win the game, you must be part. That is the only way we can appeal to the sentiment of so many people. Somebody sent me a message, I have been complete BVN, my bank is not responsible, I have to send the person the message that if you do not do it, God will do this for you. If you don't help them, they will help themselves. <laughs> okay? And we must also be sensitive to our ecosystem. We do understand the issues around 
touch points, being very vulnerable. What are we going to do as an industry? We must begin to think. That's why I talk about needs, want, emotions. What are the issues? And that must be part of the configuration. So today, I know that there are a lot of cloud source platform. We have Scam Alarm, Wyopedia 419. It's uh, trying to help the customer, but it must become more digital where customers can be saved. Let me give you an example. I believe that the Nigerian digital ecosystem in a quest to make innovation or disruption be more experiential must lead the need to create the biggest, most digital you know, platform for managing customers' scam concerns. And that's why I'm proposing something called www.nalai.ng, where each of us, when we get those strange messages, we can all put it there. And there's an app that can screen people's phone, working with telecom operators. As soon as this number sends a message, that number is blacklisted in real time, because at the end of the day, the customer do not care about the man who intercepted his money. As far as it's concerned, is it that the fintech or the bank, or the telco. We must understand the customer reality. So there are a lot of solutions that exist today that can do this, where even the woman who speaks Hausa language, as soon as this message comes, it can auto-generate a call. And this woman receives a call in Hausa language saying, the last message that just came to your phone is a scam. Do not respond. If we do not build this, we cannot go further in translating this big disruption to the life of the everyday man. And of course, I expect our insurance industry to move fast to help us to rise. Where are our cyber insurances? We don't even have it in this part of the world. You know, who will say, if your money is stolen, we're going to pay you back because every money is insured via digital channel. Who is going to lead that conversation and reduce the tension, the worries of the customer and allow us to fast track our adoption cycle by giving the customer the life of guarantee that they are looking for? And as I begin to wrap up, I also believe that there's a need for context-aware analytics. Context-aware analytics is analytics that understand that each time a customer comes to our touch points, they come with a lot of emotion that the ATM cannot understand. But ATM must become cognitive to understand that when this guy comes, he comes with an okada, he comes with a babe, and they're meant to leave the ATM to go for the most promised dinner. And he gets to the ATM. The ATM refused to work. All he can do is to beg the ATM. Mr. ATM, this is the most important day in my life. You cannot disappoint me. What does that tell me? Who says that the ATM interface cannot automatically tell me that there is an ATM one kilometer away, whether it's Bank A or Bank B, that has got money? Can that bank also use the way I press it to understand whether I have a tension, you, we all know what happened. Maybe it's one fraud star or a thief that, that, or an armor robber that followed you an ATM. The ATM can read your emotion. That technology already exists today. And it can help manage it. That is customer experience. This is where innovation meets the reality and the demands of the man on the street. I'll conclude by saying that we have that happening already. There was something we did. I belong to a group called, I started a group called Data Science Nigeria, which is a group committed to using data from a Nigerian perspective to understand customer behavior. And I'm very proud of InterSwitch for being a part of that project. What do we do? We engage postgraduate student universities and help them develop analytics and algorithms that are Nigerian centric, you know, while building their capacity for world class innovation. Now, a bank started something recently, I actually thought that bank is starting a context-aware analytics, which is often the missing link in how we engage the customer, where the past engagement is never used for future engagement. So we saw that the bank was saying, would you like to withdraw certain money? So different people went there, they were given different numbers. So we told all data science, Nigeria, Pan-Nigeria, go to that bank consistently every day, use your ATM card, do some withdrawal, let's understand. We were not talking to the bank, we are just doing like customer, which is our customer work. So we collected, about 18,000 record per Nigeria. After we did that, there was some insight that came through. Number one, we discovered that in certain instances, I go to ATM A, you ask me, do I want to withdraw 15,000? I go to ATM B, you ask me if I want to withdraw 2,000. So there's no consistency in my experience. 
We actually thought that that platform was being used for ATM you know, optimization, where a business can look at its, uh, its dispense level in a quest to ensure that every customer had something. You can reduce the volume that customer take because we're also aware that certain customers are, you know, they, they, they are, they are, they are withdrawal addicts. Do they need somebody to help and guide them? So we just saw that as a, as a country, in summary, of this whole research is the fact that there's a fundamental missing point in our ability as a business to use every touch point to understand the customer better than they do and use that understanding to offer them bespoke customized experience that make our disruption truly disruptive in their everyday life. As I conclude, this is the reality of the man on the street. He wants something that is more precise, something more intuitive, something more algorithmic. He wants interface that understands their sentiment. This is the kind of interface that customer of the future will demand so that the whole theory of disruption can match with experience and we can translate all the wow into now. Thank you for having me. I'm going to start with you, Bio. You've taken us through a very interesting discussion on customer experience. And um, I've often heard and read analysts talking about um, the whole digitization of uh, a customer experience as being overhyped um, and not worthwhile to put so much of your money for mid-term or short-term business returns. Do you think this is overhyped or are we ready? I think, like I've said, it's something that must be done, but it must be done well. If it is what being done, it cannot be done haphazard. It must be deliberate, it must be well thought through. And that was why, if you remember, I showed the segmentation model. One of the critical elements of that segmentation model is return on experience. And that is a lot of frustration of a lot of business managers I've spoken to, whether in Nigeria or out of Nigeria, oh, we digitized, but we didn't see any return. So what were the assumptions driving the whole transformation? What were the baseline? What were the understanding? Some people are told that you need to shut down your brick and mortar to become digital. But we understand that there's still some customers who are digital, which means they want physical and they want digital. So there must be a thorough understanding of your category evolution, disruption requirement, the customer mindset, you recall, one of the other segments talks about customer maturity. We cannot grow our customer, but we, can, we cannot outgrow their pocket to serve our industry. So there's a need for that blend. So the reason why anyone may say that it's overhyped is perhaps some fundamentals have become missing over time. But when a business has a very holistic view, and I, and I think I work for a company that I've come to realize that this whole digitization must start inward out, which is let's understand our business, let us understand our people, let us understand our gaps, and let us address them first, and then let us articulate a clear, clear digitalization agenda driven by a vision that is owned by CEO, and then it can cascade to our people, our processes, our products, services, and the way we go to market. But oftentimes, we always start bottom up, not top down. And then uh, we, we always see it get messed up, and then it tends to negative feeling around that, uh, whether we have done the right thing or we have done the wrong thing. So I think I will just stand in the middle uh, in answering that question. Yeah, great. Thank you.